Beautiful. Every time we're there, we are both way more scared of the living people and the animals than we are of the ghosts. They get closer as the night progresses, too. Yeah. You'll yeah. hear the coyotes, like, pretty far away howling and yipping, and you'll hear the wolves. And then, like, 20 minutes later, they're, like, right outside the door. How do you yeah. not get, like, afraid? I do of the wolves. Yeah. Like, I always tell Dylan, too, like, listen, I don't care if you make it to the car. <laughs> he has the keys. Yeah. Like, your, your best shot... <laughs> Like, the only thing you should be concerned about is me getting to the car. I have the keys. Man has the keys. If he doesn't get to the car, I'm You're not going anywhere. So, So like, I could give a shit if you make it. You want me to get to the car. So, keep that in mind. Does he actually say that? Yeah, Yeah, I tell him. I said, I will trip you. I don't care. It's time for the Garage Boozing Podcast. What's up, nerds? And welcome back to another episode of the Garage Boozing Podcast. I'm your host, the man with absolutely no plan, the chase with the face for radio, Chase Sherga. And boy, do I have one hell of an episode for you guys today. I am joined by Steve Brock, back again with his partner in crime, first time guest, Dylan Stevens. And yeah, this conversation is great, goes all over the place like we do here in the garage. And I know you're going to love it. So without further ado, folks, you know what time it is. It's time to sit back, relax, kick your feet up, crack open a cold one. And if you're really feeling fruity, take a shot. Why not? Because this week's episode of the Garage Boozing Podcast starts now. Oh, yeah. In support for the Garage Boozing Podcast, it is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped will help you trim up the family jewels to make everything nice and right for the ladies. Make sure that you're using promo code TGBP20 for 20% off your Manscaped products. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Garage Boozing Podcast. Today, I am joined by two very special guests. To my left, your right if you're watching on YouTube, we have the return of Steve Brott. Welcome back, my friend. And to my right, your left if you're watching on YouTube, we have Dylan Stevens. Guys, welcome to the show. Wow, that's how you do an intro, boys. I didn't fuck it up once. Now, Dylan, on the other hand, would be here until at least midnight. Yeah, I have to do do like two or three takes at least, minimum. Usually doesn't say. So yeah, you guys didn't hear it, but before I started that, they are like, oh, I wonder if he does his intro as good as Dylan does. So apparently Dylan fucks up every intro. Every time. Yeah. Can I swear? Because I know you guys have like teenagers watching you. That's fine. Okay. I swear Dylan all the time. Should I just like go beep? Or like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, no, it's fine. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, So yeah, you fuck up intros. They'll only watch it if we share this. Facts. Yeah, you better. He never (laughs) shares shit. I couldn't believe he he fucking retweeted me today. I was like, holy shit, I can't believe it. I feel loved. But anyway, I saw that and didn't respond to it. (laughs) Yeah, you did, dickhead. But Dylan responded, so it was fine. I got you. Or like liked it. I think he liked it, whatever. And that got me like seven more likes just because he liked it. Yeah. We got you. um, All right. So yeah, you you mess up intros apparently. I do. Yep. Elaborate. That means means explain. Yeah. Yeah. I I do. (laughs) I know we all went to South High. He's like actually book smart. (laughs) He's like book smart. Not street smart. Nothing else. Not at all. (laughs) No. Um, I don't know. I just kind of I mess it up, you know. I trip trip over my words a lot, like I just did right there. But I stutter sometimes. Tough. Yeah, I do too. That's and he always tough. does the the same thing. Like when he starts, he claps before his intro. What's up, guys? Every time. Oh, then not like a sync the audio. No, not like just I like, do that. like yeah. we're getting going. Like, yeah, okay. every, and it's every time. And like I try to cut it as much as I can. But a lot of times he's like talking as he's doing it, so I can't. And then I hate the beginning of every episode. Yeah. Why don't you do the intro then? Because I like to make fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do? Yeah. It's easier. Um, Fuck, was I? I do everything else. I edit it. I, you know, so. I sleep in the car, too. Yeah. So you're the workhorse, is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Humble brag. Yeah. Humble brag. Not yeah. even humble. <laughs> not, not even humble. All right, so real quick, I just want to start off. So Steve, he's been on the podcast many times. You guys know Steve. I know Steve very well, of course. But Dylan, this is your first time on the podcast, so I'm going to start asking you a couple questions. Okay. And um, I'm just going to get right into it. So obviously, you work with Steve. You guys hang out a lot. You travel a lot. Um how did you get to work alongside him? Like, how did you find out about Steve? So, when I was 12 years old, actually, is when oh, I first met him. That was my yeah, next question. Was, I should have asked year. How... <laughs> <laughs> Last year. <laughs> no, eight years ago, though, um, my mom actually worked with Sid, his wife now. And uh, she was like, hey, he does this ghost hunting stuff. Like, in real life, I know you like these ghost hunting shows. Maybe you should, you know, check it out, see what it's like. So, I just kind of kept going to these ghost hunting events that he hosted. And he's like, listen, if you keep showing up, I'm going to make you, like, do stuff. So... Work. Pause. 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 I'll make you work. Okay. I'm gonna make you work. Yeah. Put you to work. What kind of stuff? Pause. (laughs) Pause. 
No, but he was like, I'm going to put you to work. You can start leading like your own groups and stuff. And two years after that, I think we did the first like big group trip. Um, we went to Hillview Manor. Yep. So then he started taking me on like group trips. Was and... this still the Southland Falls Par- yeah. yep. Paranormal Society? Yeah. Okay. The OG group. Southland Falls Paranormal Society. Yeah, you did, that for, like, yeah. you did that for like three weeks. Yeah, sure. I know. And then I got way too scared and I was like, I'm It's out. freaky. Yeah. Oh my God, trust me. I know. <laughs> but then 2019, he launched Haunted Nights and he's like, yo, you want to travel with me more? I'm like, sounds dope. So past two or three years we've been doing that. Yeah. The rest is history. The rest That's is history. It. That's it. Now I'm stuck with him. <laughs> now I'm stuck with him. <laughs> I'm on the poster, so I have to show Yeah, he's, he's there now. He's on the banner. Can't get rid of him. All right, so obviously, like, anybody that knows both of your content, you know that Steve roasts the living shit out of you 24-7, which obviously is a thing now. People love it. Yeah. But why do you think that is? Why do you think that started? I don't really know. I do kind of, like, mess up a lot, like we talked about with the intros. Um, I break equipment a lot. I'm known to do you that. You break equipment? Like, I drop, like... I uh, never did that. No, you didn't. You weren't there long enough. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was only there for three weeks. <laughs> like, the REM pods and stuff. I was literally during, in the middle of a talk, um... I tried to extend it and it just popped out. A little pro thing at the top. He ripped it. Yeah. Off. Yeah. So but it, you could have like taken out. He, he probably was like, Psh. he's the yeah. reason I need insurance. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally. Like I didn't want kids, but I have them. <laughs> a gift. It's a gift. I will say he talks great shit. Like he it, does, it's yeah. funny. The things he says, is, it, it, it's, it's funny. Great well, answer. Well, our one friend Deanna likes to say is that me, Dylan, and her husband, Mark, who is another good friend of ours, we all have a very similar sense of humor. My brain just works that much quicker, <laughs> so that I can roast them. You're very that. witty. Yes. You're very witty. Like you, you're, you're, you're like, my dad. My dad. Your dad's yeah. the best, dude. I'll post like the most random shit on Facebook, and your dad will have the most wittiest comment. Yep. And like, I, sometimes I don't even know what to say, so I just, I just ha ha react yep. it. Because you know, back in the day on Facebook, you could just like something. Yep. Well, now they give you like all the emotions. Everything your dad always says, I'm just like, ha ha. Because I don't know what to say, so yep. I say ha ha. That's where that. I feel that. that. If you I don't know that. what to say, you say ha ha. Yeah, exactly. I get that, and and it just makes it a little more fun for me because then I I'm just that much quicker than the both of them, and it, it gives me quick, it gives me great. Are you always quick? Content always. Pause. <laughs> I couldn't even say what's what. What do you mean by that? <laughs> I think he knew where I was going. With yeah, one hundred percent. All right. So um. Oh yeah. So when did you first like get an interest in like paranormal investigating? I know you were just saying like you were younger and like you had an interest in all that stuff, but. Obviously, before you were 12, right? Or yeah. I mean, I saw, like I grew up watching Ghost Adventures and Ghost Hunters, all those original ghost hunting shows, but um, I hated horror movies. I would never watch them because they were freaky. Yeah, I do Same. now, but like terrifying. Same. <laughs> Same. But um, yeah, I just grew up watching like Ghost Adventures and stuff. So that was kind of So you're like, just like, yeah, that's kind of cool. And then your mom's like, hey, well, yeah, you know, this guy, like. You can do it in real life. I'm like, yeah, that sounds dope. And then I got there and I'm like, oh shit, this is terrifying. Like stuff actually happens, you know? The thing is, like, when he came, you know, his mom introduced him as like, you know, this is my son Dylan, he's 12. I mean, he well, was like this big. <laughs> he was like this big, dude. He his had voice a... didn't sound like this. Because it did. That's I... the weird thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> he's always no, had a deep no. voice. I was going to say, because yeah. the second we turned on the That happened last test, week. And like, <laughs> <laughs> and he started talking. I was like, holy shit, his voice is deeper than both of ours. Yeah. He's like, yeah. You and know, it gets deeper. Th- this one yeah, time when I was 12. I'm like, holy fuck, dude. So like when he has to kick people out of the homestead. You, that's the military voice. He that's turns his military out. voice like, hey, you guys came. Wait, what do you mean you kick people out? You kick people out? Yeah, so the homestead, the property that we manage, um, people pull up and they always try to break in. Like yeah. last week's guest. And what are you guys <laughs> just like hiding in the, like upstairs? Like, how we do you just hide. Well, we wear all black, so we just hide in the building with no lights on. And it's Shut the fuck up. Yeah. You're dead serious? Yeah. Yep. We chase people through the building. No, you're joking. No, no. straight up. So, like, anytime. Okay, so tell me on sidetrack here. So, for those of you that don't know what the Saratoga County homestead is, tell them what that is. So, it's an abandoned tuberculosis hospital, formerly abandoned. It's not abandoned anymore. Um, right outside of Saratoga, about 25 minutes. It's been abandoned for about 40 years. Um, a guy bought it at an auction a couple years ago, and we've been managing the property for him. He lives in Texas, so we run the tours, the movie nights up there that we do, all that kind of stuff. It's for sale, though, right? It is it currently is for, sale. for sale. Yeah, he's, he got some new life things where he's changing his job and stuff came up, and COVID hit right after he bought it. Um, so he's, he's looking to sell it. It's got the property, which is about 40,000 square feet, the house next door, which needs a complete reno as well, and 30 acres of land. If somebody buys it, though, are you still going to be involved? Most likely. It depends on what their purpose for buying it is. Um, we've been working. If they're going to knock it down and make like a development, right. then like right. you're fucked. Yeah. We've been working closely with the people that have been reaching out through the Facebook page because we run the Facebook page and right. the Instagram and everything. So um, we've had a hands in all that and we've been talking to all of them. And, and the few that are kind of serious about it right now, we would still be in charge of it. Um, but if not, that's okay. We got plenty of other stuff that's, you know, we're right. working on. We're working on our own location. Um, a couple actually locations here in New York that we might end up grabbing. So we'll be busy with that. We're always traveling. 
Uh, but yeah, we do photo tours. We do movie nights in October. So we do like horror movie nights in the theater up there. We bring up a projector and watch scary movies. Um, but if you break in and we're not Yeah, there, back to you, people breaking yeah. in. You just sit there and wait for them to break yeah, in. Yeah, so yeah, we're up there quite a that bit. That can't be a real thing. Yeah. No, for real. Yeah, You we, guys literally wear all black and just scare the fuck out of people. Yeah. Yeah. That's so fucked up but so cool at the it's same so time. Fun. The only issue is we've ran into a couple people that have been broken in, breaking in with like guns. And yeah. like, Have you been shot at? Not yet. Jesus Christ. Um, but... You know, all this is real. Way. Like you guys aren't fucking with me. No, no for real. No. You're not pulling my leg. You're just going for the homestead. Yeah. Help us it's fun. We'll show you. Yeah. Wait, can I actually scare people with you? Yeah. That'd be kind of, how often do you guys do this? Pretty often. Yeah. You just you're like, hey, there's nothing going on tonight. Let's go to the homestead. Yeah, we'll go up, So like, we'll go up and we'll go live on like Instagram and stuff, and like we'll investigate. And then if we see a car, we just cut all our lights and hide. And, and you're like, what? Like, what kind of noise? How do you scare them? Like, what do you? We do? pop out of windows or doors when they come in because I mean, they don't think anyone's gonna be yeah, in there. We park behind the building so they don't know yeah. we're there. So that's another warning. If you guys pull up and there's no cars there, we're probably there. <laughs> um, we park around back and there's motion lights and sensors and everything now, so we know if people are pulling up. But um, yeah, we just we kill our lights. I mean, we know that building like the back of our hand. We can walk it without lights on, um, and we do. Didn't you say one time there's like wolves and stuff in there? Yeah, there was Sometimes. a bear outside last week when I was up there. Yeah, it was in the tree. Jesus bear was in the tree? Yeah, it was a baby bear. Oh. The mom put it up there while she went to get fine food. Um, get so yeah, like, like we're the last of your worries. <laughs> like you want to do... I don't know, it sounds kind of scary. Like if I'm just walking to this man in place and people... Every are, time we're there, we are both way more scared of the living people and the animals than we are of the ghosts. They get closer as the night progresses too. Yeah. You'll yeah. hear the coyotes like pretty far away howling and yipping and you'll hear the wolves and then like 20 minutes later, they're like right outside the door. How do you yeah. not get like afraid? I do oh, of dude, the wolves. Yeah. Like I always tell Dylan too, like... Listen, I don't care if you make it to the car. <laughs> he has the keys. Yeah. Like your your best shot, like the only thing you should be concerned about is me getting to the car. I have the keys. Man has the keys. If he doesn't get to the car, I'm You're not going him, anywhere. So. so like I could give a shit if you make yeah. it. You want me to get to the car. So keep he, that in mind. Does he actually yeah. say that? He does. Yeah, yeah, I tell him. Night. Yeah. I said I will trip you. I don't care. I'm gone. I think I can take a walk. I have a, I got a so wife at home. I got a dog. What's he got? I the, can take ar- the army. Well, I mean, <laughs> he serves our country. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. A little bit. Once a, once a month on weekends. Yeah, you yeah know? He's, he's a weekend warrior. <laughs> yeah, right. I think I could take a wolf. Yeah. Punch run. on the snout. Yeah, run. Honestly, they, they do say that. Yeah, they, they say yeah. like something like like a bear or like or a, a shark. wolf. Pun- or a shark, yeah. yeah. We don't yeah. have any of those at the home. I guess an alligator, you can just close your mouth. It's really easy. I'm not going to try that. Yeah, <laughs> me either. No. But yeah, we do deal with the wolves, the bears, and all that. But we Are do... you dead serious when you say that to him, though? Like, you're like, I will trip you. No, I mean, I honestly wouldn't trip him unless it was there's really... Assembly. Unless oh, it was there's, like... There's this heart. Steve's heart just came out. You heard that. Unless, he wouldn't actually do it. <laughs> unless it was necessary. All right, so life or death between the two, you're like, all right, I'll see you, buddy. <laughs> I mean, that's that's for anybody. If, yeah. if, if there's two people, like, I don't care. I mean... My what wife. if it was your my wife? wife. Yeah. My wife, obviously, that's different. Totally. You know what I mean? Like, if, if you're in a situation where it's life or death and you're there with your friend, I don't care how much you like him, you want to go home. Right? Like, that's kind of fast. I mean, though. yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, what's he got to look forward to? Polo? <laughs> <laughs> like, Fold. Yeah, right? Yeah, like, I'm doing you a favor. <laughs> Fair. Here's our dressing rooms. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the kids in the, the they, keep, they keep him in the basement. They do. The basement there is scary. It is pretty scary. Yeah. Everyone thinks it's haunted. Yeah. He's used to it. But yeah, we do right, scare people at the homestead. We, we do. do. We go up, we'll, we'll do our Instagram lives, um, you know, our little videos or whatever. And then if people pull up, we kill our lights. And I mean, we can we can walk that building in the dark. And, and most people can't. Do you like have this on video of you like scaring people? Yeah. Sam and Colby. If you watch that episode, we That's did scare so kids. Um, Sam and Colby on YouTube. Yeah. We watched, we scared some teenagers that broke in. One kid like floated off the porch. He, he levitated. Like, he got scared. Yeah. Like it was so funny because. Was he injured? No, no okay, good. they laughed actually after, but it's because like. So do you after you're like, hey, we're not like, assholes. Yeah, no, we're not no. like we'll jump out and we'll scare them, but, but like that's better than us calling the cops. You know what I mean? Totally. So like we're not assholes. If you're breaking in, we're up there as long as you're not causing damage. Like if you're Being just destructive, right? If you're breaking in to like take pictures, or whatever, we're not gonna be an asshole. Dude. We're just gonna say, hey, like if you want to come in, you got to book a tour. Like that's and for the thing is, is, like people have been doing that for years. Oh, yeah. exactly. And some people don't know. That's that why it's we like, give them the benefit of the doubt. The that's place, cool. Okay, the place I, has been abandoned for forty three years. This place is huge, by the way. It it's massive. literally cool. fucking huge. We're gonna get Chase to come in and do an investigation with us. I'll do it. I'm, be I've been itching, but like I will be a pussy. You'll have to do a solo. I'll, no, <laughs> no. You're gonna say I'm gonna literally hold on to your shirt like this, and if you if you run away from me. Let go. I'm gonna be very. We excited. can because again, yeah. we can run in the dark. I know. We'll I cut like the it. lights and go. I'll pull my flashlight you... then. I don't know, and I still won't there to go. Yeah. I'll be... You're There's... staying in the basement alone for at least an hour. Yeah, with Charlie. Nope. With Charlie. Uh-huh. With Charlie. Yep. Last time I went to a basement, I heard a jail cell go. You did. Oh, wow. yeah. That was like daylight too. Yeah, dude, so scary. We heard the like coughing, and then Pete scared you during the night that one time
Um, that was at the old Washington County Jail. Yeah. We've I don't think I've ever ghost hunted with you. Have I, Chase? No. 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 Damn. He did, you did a few spots. So you did Parks Bentley. You did D.P. Dean. Well, I, I think I, I did the old Washington County uh, Jail twice. Yeah. And then I did the Parks Bentley place. And I did that one place that was on like a river or whatever. I, was it from Vermont? Something like that. It Wilson was some Castle? big mansion place. Wilson Castle. Yeah, Wilson Castle. Or did you do DP? You did DP Dean in Lake George. The big house. That might have yeah. been it. That, that might have been it. it. Yeah. We filmed an episode there for our terrible YouTube channel back then. Yeah. <sighs> It shit just scares me. All right, anyway, you were saying. So, yeah, you jump out and you're like, we hey, like, it's all right. We're like, hey, you can't be here. You know what I mean? Like, if you And walk. you're not a douchebag about it. No. I like, Unless they I like that. We match their energy. So, if they're respectful, we're respectful. If you're an asshole. So, I'll... have you had people, like, freak out and be like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've had people that'll stand there and argue with us for 25 minutes, half hour, that we can't be there and they can. And I was like, that's fine. I'll call the sheriff so we can talk to them and see who wins because we're going to win. And the sheriff show up and they're like, all right, yeah. The sheriff's know we're there. We call them when we get Right. There. So, we're friends with them. We work and they probably them. know you by now. They yeah. do. We call them. They're like, you at the home set? Yep. <laughs> it's always adults though like the kids teenagers yeah. kids my age pretty like, respectful okay, it's cool pretty respectful. Well, of course because they're scared but, but it's yeah, adults. adults always think they know everything yeah. and they stick a camera in their face and yeah, you're, like, yeah. you're like well what literally though. the best one that we got recently i think was last year we were up there um it was late i mean it was it was probably two almost three in the morning we didn't think anybody else was going to come up that night we were just investigating having a good time and a car pulled up and they were yelling as they were pulling up we're like well, they're oh they're hammered they're 100 hammered they're coming here <laughs> yeah like, we know they're coming here so they drive by and the thing is they park at the U-turn, which is the farthest away parking lot. You got to walk pretty far. You can park in the parking lot and walk in. I think I've only don't driven by this place one time. I don't know how to get there. It, yeah, it's out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, it really is. I think I was with you, actually. You 100% were. Time. Yeah. And uh, so <laughs> we watched them park down there, and we kill our lights. And we watch them start walking. They climb through a hole in the fence. Do you think they see you kill the lights? Or no, they, they have, have no idea. They have no really? idea. No idea. Because as soon as we hear that, you can hear cars and see the lights. Mile. Oh, because you guys are inside and right. stuff. Okay, about a yeah. mile before they get there, because there's nothing. There's up there. nothing up there. So you hear a car coming, at especially two in the morning. Is it literally just like a straight road? Like you can. There's see the one. Cars yeah. Like... There's one house. There's there's a straight road each way. You can see them coming up the hill. You can this hear. This is them. so interesting. No street lights. Yeah. There's nothing up there. So any light that's coming is a car, right? And or UFO. And <laughs> so Aliens. we see them park, and we are down in the children's wing, which is near the end where they parked, and we're just watching them. They climb through a hole in the fence, and. uh we hadn't actually mowed or cut the grass out there yet, so it was pretty tall. So you they, have to do that. Is that your? Response we though? do it just so people know that we're working on it. Like you know, uh, what so I mean, because if it's like wicked long grass, people know that like yeah. no one's been there for right. a while. That exactly. makes a lot. of we sense. We keep it up so they know that there's actually. That's a, a lot of grass to mow. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a lot of work amount. up there. Who does it? Uh, we had some friends up actually that lived up there that did it for us. Um, but we did weed whacking. We cut down trees. We I thought we, I was Dylan, but okay. We've probably spent <laughs> about six hundred hours of work up there easily in the last couple years. Yeah, holy shit, for free, and. So we're in there. We watch them walk through the fence, and they're just tripping over the broken branches. They're, they're <laughs> drunk. Yeah. They're falling, dropping their beers, and yelling. I mean, they're probably in their 40s. <laughs> oh, wow. There's a group of four or five of them, and uh, it took them probably 20 minutes to get through the, the overgrowth. That's the worst part, honestly, is waiting for them to get to the building. Because it's just they're annoying. trying to find the like, yeah. you know, best. <laughs> they're trying to rest. find their way in, and we're just sitting there like, Jesus. But yeah, so we're, we're tracking them down the line of the fence as they're walking. We're just walking basically next to them in the building. They have no idea. That's creepy. I know. And so there's this one window that everybody climbs in because somebody ripped out the window frame, and it's just open. So that's where people climb in. So we know that's where they're going. So we go, and we stand right inside. So the they know how to get there, apparently. They're just looking for the biggest opening. Yeah. And so they see it. And as soon as the dude puts his one hand on the side and puts his foot up to climb in, we just stepped out. And we said, hey, man, <laughs> dude almost fell out the window. And he's like, dude, what, the, what are you guys doing in here? And we're like, oh, yeah, like, you can't be here. You know, you got to do the whole spiel. And he's like, they're laughing at this point. Again, they were respectful. They laughed. They were like, all right, we get it. Like, you guys scared the shit out of us. They're like, you guys just waiting in here? We're like, yeah. They're like, how long did you know we were here? We're like, oh, we saw you park. He's like, 20 minutes ago? So yeah, he goes, you just watched us struggle for 20 minutes just to scare us and not tell us before all that? We're like, well, yeah, that's the fun part. Like, we watched you struggle for half an hour and then ruin your night to get in. It's like a haunted house that you didn't want to walk into. Exactly. You don't know, you don't know what's set up as a haunted house. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. You think you're going to go in and, you know, scare yourselves with all the, the shadows and the Or just like ghosts. see all the like broken shit. And right. Like, oh, this is cool. Graffiti right. everywhere is sick. Right. And then me and Dylan pop out. <laughs> it's like the worst really. case scenario. Yeah. I was totally expecting to be like a bra, but like at the same time, like if I was doing something like that and I heard, hey, what's up, dude? I'm like, that's scary. Whoa, that's scary. scary. Shit. And turn on flashlights. That's right. Even worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll blind. We dad do that kid outside. So we were outside. This was a couple years ago. We hadn't done any cleaning. You guys are assholes. It's so bad. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. And so like but we're, in, great. we're it's inside great. the building and people park across the street. And we're like, all right. So we, we sneak out the front window. They can't even see us. We're 30 feet from them across the street by a big tree. We can hear everything they're saying. They have no idea we're there. They're like, 
all right, we're going to, you know, we're going to go in the front window. We're just going to get out and go over here. I was like, oh, please do. Like, you have to yeah, you're waiting for it. I was like, you have to walk right by us. So they turn off the lights. They get out of the car. We walk about, I don't know, 10 feet towards the front stairs. Pitch black. The kid walks up the stairs and he stops. I'm not joking. Probably me to Dylan away. Brings his phone up to take a picture. He had no idea I was standing there. That's two feet. Yeah. I literally turned my flashlight on. Dude threw his phone in the air and just ran. <laughs> like, he had no idea it was happening. Because like you're in the pitch black in the middle of basically nowhere. You don't expect a bright ass light to turn on a foot away from you. I would have yeah. pissed myself. I think he I did. did. Yeah. Dude, he, he ran that way. I was basically like, dude, your car's over here. Like you got to get your phone and go. Did you give him his phone back? Or like, yeah, he came back and grabbed it. We were like, yeah, you guys can't be here. Like, again, we're not assholes. You exactly. know what I mean? Like, we scare so you I, and then we I could yeah. see I could see you scaring the shit out of me. Like, hey, bro, your phone, like, yeah. hey, Listen, you like, need this, man. You threw like, it. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if We've only had a couple times where we've actually had to, like, threaten to call the police on people. We've called the cops on one girl. Um, she got two felonies, so don't do that. Um, she got a felony for criminal mischief and a felony for burglary. So that's a big deal. So, like, you get it. Like, yeah. Yeah. A couple years ago, like it wasn't like maintained like it is now, but yeah. at the same time, guys, like be respectful. Yeah, you know, it's like, a business now. Yeah, well, exactly. It, it it's not it's not abandoned anymore because no. it's like, owned property it's operated, managers right. and stuff like that. He pays taxes on it. The dude pays his bills on it. Right. It's 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 a business now. And you guys we, mow the lawn. We like, don't charge like egregious. you get a two and a half hour tour for thirty five bucks, and the money goes back into helping the building. How often do you do a tour there? Not as much oh, this say, year. You say tour? I say tour. Every no, it's a tour. Shit for it. It's tour. 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 How, what do you say? You know how tour. many people give me you shit say, for that? You say tour. tour? He's been hanging out with me for eight years. He's going to say it the same way. Tour? T-O-R? T-O-R-E? Uh, Where's the U? Tour. Tour. I'm um, not anyways, perfect. I don't so yeah, we do those. Um, usually on the weekends, um, we have some we're going to set up for August. Um, we don't do them as much this year because we're traveling a lot. But uh, we oh, try to do them. We're so busy. We are. I've been in four states in the last three weeks. But um, yeah, so we just we do we do them as much as we can. Um, but they're like two and a half hours. There's usually three tours per day that we do, and they're thirty five bucks. And the money goes back into helping the building. You know, cameras, lights, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Try we have, to restore it. We have historical photos that haven't been released too. Yep. So we'll show them along the tour. What it used to look like when it was open. Yeah. You're standing in oh, the so spot. You, you, yeah. Oh, that's. We cool. went and met with a historian. We've done a lot of work. I mean, we've put in a lot of work on this building for the last couple of years. We got it on the Travel Channel about five months after we took over. Um, one of the biggest paranormal YouTube channels has been there. Two of them, actually. Sam and Colby them, yeah. and Josh. Uh, Exploring with Josh have been out there. Jake the Viking, Cinemax Seth, like all these people. Massive channels, hundreds of thousands, millions of subscribers. You know, it's been on the Travel Channel. We put a lot of time into this building. So, like, the people that break in, again, we, we get it. You know what I mean? Like, it's been abandoned for a and long time. And some people don't know. Some people don't know. Yeah. And right. that's why our first instinct isn't to call the cops on people. Right. Just scare the shit out of me. Right. Like, hey, bro. Like, right. Well, in the beginning, too, we didn't really care if people went into, like, Urbex or whatever. We're like, yeah, you know. Whatever. Like, it is cool. what it is. It doesn't hurt the place. But then two fires were set. Yeah. We're like, eh, we should probably they start set fires in there? Yeah. The like the set. building on fire? Yeah, the superintendent's house got set on fire in March 2020. Yeah. Um, burned a pretty big hole in the floor on the first floor. See, um, that's fucked up. I don't, they like, burned I don't out, like that. They burned out our entire stage in our theater in the in the building in 2019, 2018. Right before we took over, they burned all that out. So, like, yeah. that's the kind of stuff we want to stop. Draft top. The draft top was designed to give you a better all-around drinking experience. And let me tell you how. You take your draft top bar tool... Put it on top of your adult beverage, give it a little squeeze, not too hard, a little bit of friction, a little to the left, a little to the right, a little to the left, a little to the right, and wha-bam. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see me demonstrate this. If you're listening, I'm sorry, you just got to hear me talk. But yeah, then you pop your draft top off, take this, push it down just a tad, and now your beer just became a cup. So forget about wasting plastic, pouring your beer can into a cup, into a red Solo cup, if you will. It doesn't matter because now your draft up just made your beer into a cup. So now you can chug your beer a hell of a lot faster. You can smell the aroma of the alcohol. The experience of drinking here is just so much better thanks to Draft Top. So go get yours now. I want you to have one. You want you to have one. And you can get your own Draft Top at www.drafttop.com. And don't forget to use promo code GARAGEBOOZING for 10% off site-wide. That's right. It doesn't matter what you get in your draft top cart. 10% off site-wide using promo code GARAGEBOOZING. You know how to spell it. Don't be a fool. Buy your draft top right now. Treat yourself. You deserve it. All right, back to the show.
No, yeah, it, it is cool though. We'll, we'll have some tours out there in August, um, but it is for sale, so we don't know what the future holds for that place. But, but I hope it stays the same. I it, hope, it'll be cool. It, it's yeah. it's cool. It's a it's a beautiful building in its own way. It was amazing when it was in operation, and uh, it's too bad it got to where it is. But it's been cool to be able to work on it for the last you know three or four years. And like you said, I mean, we've known about this building since we were in high school. I know. I've been staring at the outside of this building since like. Dude, we dro- we drove by it before you even had any involvement yeah. in the building. Like, I, I, I saw it one time yeah. and I was like, oh shit. I've known about the place for the last 12 years and I just started working up there like two and a half years ago. So that's cool to us to be able to be, you know, the ones involved in it and try to save it and bring light to it. Um, and if it ends, it ends. You know, we, we did our best and we, we had some fun with it for the last couple of years. We met a lot of great people. It opened a lot of doors for us with like the Travel Channel and Discovery and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know. I Maybe. mean, I spent my entire summer before basic training up there. So He did. Yeah. He literally left for basic training like two weeks after he filmed for the Travel Channel. Yeah. Wow. All right, so earlier you mentioned Sam and Colby. I actually found out about Sam and Colby because of you guys. But like, my question is, how did you... How, actually, I'll, I'll say to them who don't know, who are Sam and Colby and how did you guys find them out? So... Sam and Colby are like some of the most popular YouTubers right huge. now. They're seven huge. Seven million subscribers Over right seven. They're almost at seven and a half mil right yeah. now. Um, they reached out to us. Are they uh, Really? Okay. Yeah, last year because they wanted to film at the homestead. Ah. Okay. So what their channel started out as was Urbex. They would you know go to break into abandoned places and film abandoned videos. Um, they did get arrested one time for that. So they, and with their channel growing and you know their brand and all this stuff, they they've kind of steered away from that now. They do things on the legal side, which right. is way better. But in the beginning, you got to do something. That you like, right. You that, and that was they were totally. huge. They were huge with that. Um, and so when they reached out to us last summer um, to film at the homestead, they had about four point five, four point six million subscribers. <laughs> That's a shit ton. I know. Yeah. Well, that, but think about that. They've gained three million in a year. You know, that's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's unbelievable, their growth. Um, now their sole purpose on YouTube is haunted. They do paranormal stuff. They investigate all over. They go all over the world for they're like the They're like the ghost hunters of like YouTube. Yeah, they much. are. Um, they're the ghost adventures. They're like that popular. Because ghost adventures right now is probably the most popular TV show for paranormal. Um, it has been for a while. Dude, they're cool. Go- they're like cool guys though. Yeah, they're, they're like, really, like, I, watch their, I watch their videos and like they're like like normal dudes. They're man. super chill. Yeah, like, super really chill. Down to earth. They're two twenty five year old kids. I think they're. Both I was gonna say because like be, being a viewer, yeah. like I see that from Kansas Originally, of all yeah. places. Yeah, what right. the fuck is in Kansas? Yeah. Same but, like, <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> but like, so like I watch their videos. And I'm like, wow, these are like two bros. So like, my question is like an outsider. I was like, are they actually like bros? And, yeah, like they're yeah. actually they are. Like, dude, bros? they they live together. They've been friends. Since oh, high so they're school. roommates. Oh yeah, yeah. They do. They've been together since they, they're friends since like high school, probably before that. Um, but they got really big on Vine. Actually, is where they started. Oh, I miss Vine. They got, Vine was the shit. The their, OG. Their yeah. big break was on Vine. They did. Um, they mimicked the Family Guy following. Oh yeah, bigger following. people. <laughs> yeah. They did that on Vine, um, and it blew up for them. And they kind of took off from there. And then they they moved to YouTube and you know TikTok and Instagram and all that. Um, Love TikTok. They when we first when they first reached out to us. I, I didn't watch YouTube. I didn't know it was a thing. I still didn't like. I knew well, you, you knew YouTube was a thing. Well, you know what I mean? Though? Like I didn't know it was like a big thing. Like I knew you used to do YouTube. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, Chase, copy and Chase. You know that was fun. That was me. I did that back. He in the was day. he was pretty big back in the day, and so like I thought YouTube had died off. I didn't know it was like this big massive platform that it is still. And so they reached out. Huge, and I was I was kind of like, we don't let people in there to film overnight. It's not safe. It's a liability thing at the homestead. Um, so they reached out about that and I was like, yeah, no, we, we can't do that. And he's like, well, we had the, the you had the travel channel in there. I said, what's the they travel channel? Like they got insurance. Like it's a yeah. big company. He's like, oh no, no, no. Like we're a pretty big channel. And I was like, we got that too. I was like, well, what's a big channel? I don't, you know I mean? I got like 4.6 million. He goes, just, he, the, the manager, um, Zach, great guy. He, he goes, just go and, um, watch some of our videos and let me know. So I went and checked it out. I watched one of their videos. I saw it. Well, I clicked on the thing. I saw they had 4.6 million. And I was texting Dylan. I was like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was like, wait a minute. Hold on. And uh, so I watched uh, one of their videos actually at the Winchester Mystery House. Yeah. And because I wanted to see how they carried themselves. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know these guys. Are I they assholes? Right. Are they cool? They're I, don't, yeah. I don't want it to yeah. be a joke. I don't want it to be disrespectful. Are they like breaking shit? Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I watch it. They joke around. They have fun. But they take it seriously. They you match gotta have fun. They, yeah. You have to, one hundred percent. They they're very similar. Like you said, they match our energy. Very similar. We know when to be serious when we're investigating, but I know when to give Dylan shit. He knows when to give me shit. We know when to be funny. You give him shit back. I he do. Does. Every now and then. Not nearly as much. Not yeah. nearly as much. <laughs> but um, it's cool too because they're really interested outside as yeah. well. Like when they turn the cameras off, they're like, okay, why do you think this happens? Yeah. You know, what's your theory behind this? Oh, even when the cameras are yeah. on. Yeah. Oh, and so that's they're, what they're stuck bros. Out. They're bros. That's okay. what stuck out to us too. Is you know, for the camera. They're obviously very interested in the activity because they want it on camera. But when the cameras turn off, they actually will stop and ask us, like, hey, you guys have been doing this for a while. 
Why do you think that happened? Or what do you think's going that's on? That's cool as fuck. And that's that's what's cool to us because they're genuinely interested in it. They right. actually want to know. They they are interested in the actual investigation, why these things happen, why they're happening the way they are, and that kind of stuff. And that's what's fun for us. And you know, we've been able to hang out with them on our last trip back in January. We were with them for a week. And we got to hang out and you know actually talk outside and of like filming. And like share experience. Right. And, and actually like talk that. about outside of filming, talk business, talk about YouTube, talk yeah. about investigating and we just click. We're, we're, they're super, super down to earth dudes. Really, really good guys. And, uh, it's fun. We just, we just booked our next, uh, thing with them for later this year, September, I think. Yeah. So we'll be doing something else with them later this year, which will be cool. And, and we love investigating with them. We, we always get good stuff. And that's what a lot of people ask too. They're always like, is it fake? Is it Do fake? They, yeah. Oh, I, I, I bet you guys hear that all the time. Yeah. Every and time. the funny thing is, is like, I, I bring this up as a frequent like conversation on the podcast where people are talking like, I don't know, people talk about aliens or, like, uh, paranormal stuff, like, ghost stuff like that. And I, I always say, like, I don't know if I necessarily believe in ghosts, but mm-hmm. I believe in something. There's like the paranormal Energy, shirt. something, because, like, I'm like, trust me, I've heard it, yeah. I've seen it. Oh, sure, maybe it might have been three weeks, but trust yeah. me. You had your like, experience. Yeah, it's no fucking joke. No, and, and, and that's what's the cool thing is, like, people always ask us, well, like, is it fake? You know, are you guys, are they doing stuff? Are they editing it? Are they doing, you know, this to add stuff? Is the equipment rigged? I said, well, no, most of the equipment we use is, is ours. It's what we use at the events. Yeah. If you come to our event, I'll hand you the same piece of equipment that they but use. But Dylan breaks it. I he do. Does. Every now and then. <laughs> he does. A lot of it has, actually has casings, so if I do drop it, it doesn't break. Yeah. <laughs> that's facts. Yeah. I buy those things on purpose. Um, but that's, I mean, that's the other thing. Literally, like, a lot of people that come to our events now found us through Sam and Colby, and it's like, you know, if you're questioning their videos, you're using the same equipment at our events that they're using in their videos that we yeah. bring. So, I mean, like, you're hands-on with the same stuff. They, they edit out the same thing any TV show edits out. The dead parts when yeah. nothing's happening. Exactly. You don't want to watch that. It doesn't matter. Yeah, dead parts. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> nobody wants to watch that. It, but that doesn't mean it's fake. You're in these buildings for eight, ten hours because you want the climatic shit to be right. exactly right. I mean, in every aspect of your life. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you're in a building for eight hours and you have to edit it to an hour, it's gonna look like stuff happens every time you walk into a room. But that doesn't mean it's fake. But see, I'm gonna. I- Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like there's a big difference between like you guys, Sam and Colby, and then like Ghost Hunters. And I'm not knocking Ghost Hunters by any means, but like Ghost Hunters is like a national TV show, for example. Mm-hmm. So like I feel like there has to be like some producers and shit like they're like in people's sure. ears and like, oh my god, you hear that? And like you don't see shit like that. But like when you guys are on YouTube, like actually documenting this shit, you're free. Exactly, you have no one breathing down your neck. Like it, it's you guys doing yeah. your thing versus like a national TV network. There's a, that just wants to get viewers. There's we've been lucky, and enough. again, not not no. ghost hunters. and that we've been lucky enough to work with both sides of it. We've worked with the Travel Channel a couple of times. We just filmed with them again in May um, for Destination Fear with Dakota Laid and Chelsea Laid and Tanner and Alex, all those guys, great people um, who homies. are actually really good friends with Sam and Colby now, um, which is cool. But um, it's a very different dynamic. It's not faked. It's just more like regimented, I guess, on on TV. You know what I mean? Like yeah, mo- there's what more. Does that mean? It's like. Scheduled. scheduled yeah it's more set up that you know the interviews these are the questions they're asking in the interviews versus you know what i mean where like if something happens the same with colby it's more on the fly like oh why do you think that happened kind of thing regimented um, though write that down words with chase, words with yeah, chase. Right. Two weeks from now. Shot. i suck at words um but you know whereas like dakota and all of them they actually edit the show for the travel channel that was part of their thing so they get to actually edit it so they have a little more freedom as well but the freedom that you get with YouTube... So they could just edit it and be like, here's the episode and they air it? Yeah, Basically, I mean, I'm yeah. sure they have some... Yeah, you know, there's some but, say. But they do edit their own episodes, which is super cool. Um, but the freedom on YouTube is... Unparalleled. It, it's ridiculous. You I know can, what that means. Yes. You can do... Unmatched. Exactly. Yeah, as long as you follow their, like, you know, their criteria of right. things you can't have in a video, obviously, it, that's it. I mean, they, they check, like, closed There's captioning. so much freedom on YouTube, man. And yeah. there's, like, some, like, big channels and, like, shows that are, like, airing a whole episode on YouTube. It's, like, millions of views. And, like, would they actually get that on TV? Who knows? Because a major network What might blows not allow my mind about YouTube, since we've kind of dug into it in the last year or so, is, is the viewership. I mean, yeah. you look at the Travel Channel. From what I know, to get renewed on the Travel Channel, you need about 100,000 viewers per episode. Average. Sam and Colby's, one of their videos they just dropped in their season two uh, on YouTube, they had 2.2 million in the first 24 you hours. You can smoke that shit. That's, it's it's yeah. ridiculous. It's, it's nuts. unbelievable. It's nuts. And it, it blew our mind, and we're like, shit. All right, folks, let me tell you all about the pump action shotgun tool. Whoa, there's a tool for shotgunning? Hell yeah, there is. So listen to this. The pump action shotgun tool created by the drunk engineers. Love that name, by the way. It makes shotgunning a hell of a lot easier, and let me tell you how. So you're going to take your beer, 
and you're gonna stick it right in the shotgun tool, like this. Hold it like that so the air pockets are up here, and then you're gonna give it a little squeeze. You're gonna hear pop, bam, pop. But look at that, no mess. So right now the air pocket's right up here, and you're gonna wanna make sure you take this, push that down, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate the tool. Hold the beer can in place to the mouthpiece. Then you're gonna put your mouth on the mouthpiece, and shotgun. And boom, no mess. You can shotgun at the dinner table, family events, wherever you want with absolutely no mess. So forget shotgunning, slamming a knife right through. Yeah, not a thing anymore. Thanks to the pump action shotgun tool by Drunk Engineers. And you can get yours right now. So just log on to www.drunkengineers.ca. Don't forget to use promo code GARAGEBOOZING for 15% off site-wide. That's right, promo code Garage boozing for 15% off site wide. Go get yours now. Thank me later. Back to the show. What are we doing? Hey, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Field. So we jumped into YouTube and yeah. we, we didn't want to, but we did. Are, you, so, are you glad you did? Well, no, that's. Who does the know. editing? You? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I sleep in the car on the way to the events. What do you think? Like, <laughs> come on. Free travel. Exactly. Free travel. He teleports. I do. <laughs> He I'm, teleports. I go to sleep at home, wake up at a haunted location. It's pretty sick. Sleep again, wake up at another one. He's pretty much just, <laughs> that's his weekends. It, it's, Except yeah. one week in a month, he's like doing the military the army yeah. thing. Yeah. Weekend warrior. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, Thank you for your service. Oh, of course. I don't do anything. I do more than him. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's, YouTube is, is cool. I, I still don't love the editing of it because like, it sucks. It's not it's fun. Su- it's, it's not, not fun. fun. It's not um, fun. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting better at it. I'm a little bit faster at it now. I'm learning as I go. It's I'm, not easy. Though. No, I'm learning Adobe as I go. And like, dude, the thing is, like, you're probably doing more editing than me. And like, I have a a podcast that'll go for like an hour to an hour and a half that I have to shave down to like 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. And that takes me six hours. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just audio files matching up with video files. So I can only imagine what you're doing. The when we premiere it, he'll like show me all the cuts and the edits that he had to make. Most of it is because I'm dumb and I say stupid stuff. See, so I mean, now I, he roasts himself. Up. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I was just I've say, trained him. I was, I was just self-deprecation. Say, yeah. He like he, 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 yeah, I've trained him. But he'll show me everything that he had to do for the video. I'm like, wow, that looks like it was awful. He's like, yeah, I was up for like 15 hours editing this. I'm like, wow, that sucks. Glad yeah. it wasn't me though. And he's like, cool, it looks good. Yeah. Sweet, let's premiere it. Yeah, Sometimes I do, you know, pitch. He helps with the music and stuff. Yeah. yeah, he helps with like some of the music and stuff. Because like the thing with our channel that we wanted to make it a little bit different than other investigation channels. Sam and Colby have their style, and it works fantastic, obviously, for them. They and you want your own music. style. Yeah. Right. So they add the, the background music and the graphics and stuff, where ours is way more of a, just a raw investigation. I was going to say, because I'm not a big fan of like the background music and stuff like that. If I'm watching something like that, I want the full experience. Yep. Yep. We have a very raw style of investigation where... Raw. Nice. Raw. Monday Night Raw is <laughs> more. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. That was a great video game back in the day. Um, but anyways... Yeah, so like we'll have the investigation for eight hours or whatever, and our episode might be an hour and twenty minutes. Yeah. But we have music in the intro, the you know the like, goal, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, um, outro. But during the investigation, you're hearing just what we're hearing. There's I like the that. audio from the cameras. That's it. There's no music. We put this like titles if it's if somebody's muffled when they're talking, we put subtitles. But like, I edit a lot, but I. I don't. You know what I mean? Like right. it, it's at a lot of editing for like certain cutting camera because we use two camera angles also. So I have to match the audio from the camera. That's angles. tough. Yeah. And I do I, that with one camera. Yeah. I already know. Like two cameras. Oh yeah. my God. And this kid pointing at the ceiling or the wall or something. I'm going to, <laughs> I I'm have going, been known to do that. Yeah. I'm going to change camera angles and it's Dylan pointing at his shoes. I'm like, I, I have been known to do I can't that. Use that for the <laughs> Not next thirty lie. seconds, but uh, he beats himself up. I love that. It. <laughs> it's good in training, but uh, you know, it's <laughs> it's a lot of work, but it's been fun. I mean, our channel, our first video we did was the Conjuring House. So the Real House that inspired the Conjuring movies. We stayed there overnight by ourselves. The doll's locked in, right? Yeah. Annabelle's well, not really there. Yeah. That's not the real Annabelle. Oh, what? Actual... I met the real Annabelle like the month after though. Okay, so if you guys haven't seen the movie The Conjuring, yeah. Um, it's a it was a big like scary movie that came out a couple years ago. Great movie, honestly. Yeah. And there's a haunted house, the Conjuring House, whatever. So apparently these two investigate it, and the fucking doll wasn't there. So the real doll is still Ed and Lorraine you say Warren's doll. 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 Hey, it sounded weird when the you real said doll. Doll. Say doll. Say, say it again. Say the real doll. The real doll. The real doll is at <laughs> um, Ed and Lorraine Warren's museum still in Connecticut. Oh, that makes sense. So it's still in the museum behind their house, even though they've both passed. I did go visit the real doll. It's like all locked up, right? Like, yeah. It's in a glass thing. It's fine. Oh, he's like, Psh, hammer. It's a raggedy and doll. What's it going to do? Levitate? I don't know. Uh, anyways, <laughs> so no, the real doll, the, the house does not have the real doll. 
It's terrifying, though. It we investigated there. Honestly, we both went into it pretty low expectations, um, thinking it was hyped up. It's movies, you know. It, we might have a couple things. It's a house, residual activity. Yeah, it's, it's an old it? house. I mean, it's from the 1600s. It's an old house. Um, First 20 minutes, we heard footsteps were running down the stairs. We thought it was the owner, like, telling us, like, hey, shit's going down. Someone pulled in. No one was there. Dude, it, it was a good start. It was intense. Like, we were both blown away. Like, blown away by the amount. Right by the start. By oh, yeah. the amount of the activity. Like, through the whole night. We stopped filming. You and, slept like, there? Yeah. We didn't sleep. Well, we didn't sleep. We were supposed to sleep, but we didn't sleep. We stayed the night. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so we were. We got done filming at what? One? I think two? so. One, one or two. And we're like, all right, everybody's waiting for us to go live on Instagram. People were like, oh, you're there. Like, go live, go live. So we were going to go live for like an hour. We went live at like two in the morning. We had to be out by eight. So we're like, well, no, we won't live at one. We're like, we're going to yeah. go live until two. We'll sleep for like six hours. We'll get out. Went live at one. We turned off the live recording at 7.15 in the morning. Jesus Christ. It was yeah. so active on live. We had 150, 200 people watching for the whole six and a half hours because it was just nonstop stuff going on. People in Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, South America, everywhere just watching because so much stuff was happening. It blew us away. I mean, literally a piece of the window trim from downstairs got ripped off the wall while we were upstairs it's on camera. Yeah. You gotta upstairs. watch the video to see it. It's fucking crazy. Can I say that? What? Can you gotta watch the video to see it. Can I say the F word? Fuck yeah, of course you can. <laughs> it was crazy. It was yeah. fucking crazy. It literally, <laughs> the live, like we shit our pants on the live. Because we're yeah. upstairs, dude. We're talking about something that was just going on upstairs. We're talking to the camera, these people on Instagram. And it sounded like the house was falling down. Somebody literally on the camera, you can see the piece of window trim pop off the wall and then fly out in the middle of the room. We're upstairs. It's downstairs. There's nobody in there. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So remind me not to do that ever. We so are, we're going to take you to the Conjuring. We're hosting, nope. we're hosting uh, events there. Nope. Yeah, we are. Not in. But I will go to the homestead. I'll go to the homestead. But all right. So we'll I take would, you to the homestead and then the Conjuring. Yeah, we'll, we'll warm you up only if I can wear all black at the homestead and be like, out to people that walk you in. Okay. You have to walk around with a flashlight, though. Well, that, that, that wasn't a part of the deal. <laughs> I have a flashlight on my phone that I will gladly use. How are you going to scare them if they know you're coming? That's a personal question. <laughs> <laughs> Cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> yeah. oh, God. No, but um, that's a good question. I don't know. I'll like hide we'll figure it. it out. Yeah, we'll sleep on it. it. Yeah, figure it out. Well, folks, you may have guessed it, and if you did, you were right. This episode with Steve and Dylan was so good that we had to break it up into two parts. So I'm sorry for the cliffhanger. I'm sorry to leave you hanging. But if you want part two, you're going to have to tune in next week to the Garage Boozing Podcast. I'll see you, nerds, next week. Hey, nerds. Please don't forget the number one way to support the brand. Buy some merch. We've got hats, hoodies, sweatshirts, t-shirts, and it's all available to you at www.garageboozing.net slash shop. And don't forget to follow on all your favorite social media accounts as well as YouTube at Garage Boozing. And of course, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe, whatever the button may be to the Garage Boozing Podcast on your favorite podcast platforms so you can be notified as soon as a new episode is released. Ladies, gentlemen, and nerds, do you have what it takes to be a guest on the fastest growing, alcohol chugging, and nonsense talking podcast? Well, now is your chance. The Garage Boozing Podcast has new guests every week, and you could be one of them. Just simply log on to www.garageboozing.net, click the Be On The Show tab, and submit your information. It's that simple. Join the boozement, or be a loser. Don't miss your chance, because we're taking this to the moon.